Welcome back to Lee's Lately. Before we get into this one, if you could just hit that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell as well so you never miss a video, that will be greatly appreciated. But today's video is about Ethan Ampadu, who looks to be our first signing of the window. Now, if you saw my video yesterday, you'll have seen uh, how I mentioned that uh, all the news outlets, Fabrizio Romano, Phil Hay, Graham Smith, Popey, all of the Leeds United outlets, all of the transfer outlets are reporting that Leeds are going to buy Ethan Ampadu subject to a medical for £7 million, which I think is a very good deal given the player that you're getting. Ethan Ampadu then is only 22 years old, even though he seems like he has been around for ever um, playing for clubs like obviously his parent club of Chelsea and then Venezia, Spezia, um, Sheffield United and uh, yeah so he's had many many appearances in first team football even though he is very very young. Um, he is very versatile. He can play as a centre-back or uh, a holding midfielder. He's also been known to play a couple of games at right-back and one game even at right midfield as well. So he's a very versatile player and I think that's something that's very underrated to have in the Championship. Somebody like uh, Ethan Ampadu coming in is able to then drop into centre-back if we've got injuries and we then bring in somebody else to play in that midfield role to deputise for him if we get injuries and that's important to have in a championship season where realistically if you play in that many games you are going to have to rotate. Uh, Ethan Ampadu is Welsh and he is also a Welsh international. Uh, he's played in many many international competitions already for Wales um, and obviously his team at Wales aren't the best in the world but he's done well um, when he's been in that international side as well so he's got a lot of experience for what is a very very young man and he's also a very versatile player um, he spent most of his time at Sheffield United playing as a centre half and that's where the Sheffield United fans a lot of them said he wasn't very good they didn't really want him um, after his spell there and that when we signed him or when we were rumoured to be in for him uh, the other day, a lot of them were saying, laughing really, saying that we were uh, we've get, getting a bad player. But I don't think it's um, too much to be panicked over because I think he will pro probably be primarily playing as a holding midfielder. And now Andrea Russo mentioned, Andrea is an Italian football expert and he is also a Leeds United fan um, and has been on the Just Your Football show Joe's podcast, loads of other uh, things around the Leeds community. Uh, he knows his stuff and he said when he played out in Italy, um, playing as a holding midfielder, he did so, so much better than when he played as a defender, uh, the actual out-and-out -out defender. Um, and the reasons for him being a better midfielder we'll start to look at now. So the first one, you'll see a graphic on the screen, I'll put that up for you. But... Um, out of the Serie A defenders slash midfielders in the 21-22 season, which is probably his best season so far, he ranked very highly amongst those players uh, for pressures and a successful pressing capability. Now, that is something that Daniel Farker will like. If you watch my Daniel Farker Tactics Explained video, you'll see that he wants his team to be able to press. When we're in a situation where we're playing against a team where we think we can have the, the majority of the ball, we will be gagging pressing and pressing high up the pitch. And even when we're playing in the mid block, having somebody like Ethan Ampadu, who is uh, successfully pressured uh, a lot of players in his time, uh, would be a good asset to have in there. And I think having something like that where you can also have that as a defender as well, bringing the line up and pushing everybody out um, is also a very good attribute to have in somebody like Ethan Ampadu. Um, the next thing we're going to move on to is tackling. Now, his tackling is something that he also excels in. Um, this is all from the 21-22 season, which is the season where he played in midfield for pretty much all of it. Um, so this is the best sort of barometer that we're going to get uh, of how we might play in midfield for Leeds. Um with a total of 76 tackles attempted and 43 of them being successful throughout Serie A, um, he enjoys the company of, at the time, Adri Adrian Rabio, uh, Martin Daron, and Marcelo Brozovic. Now, those are not bad players to be in the company of. For what was a 21-year-old at the time, uh, or even 20-year-old back then, um, to be in the company of people like Adrian Rabio, who was at Juventus at the time, Martin Daron, who was at Atalanta, and uh, Marcelo Brozovic, who was at Inter Milan, 
they are some very, very good midfielders, especially Marcelo Brozovic. At that time, he was absolutely excellent. And to be up in the company with the likes of him, who is getting to champ last season, got into a Champions League final with Inter Milan and had been an excellent player for years um, in that Croatian national side and in the Inter Milan side as well, um, is no mean feat from Ethan Nampadu. He's done really well to get up there. And the fact that he is in there... Um, shows that his tackling and, and defensive capability as well is not lacking in that role. Um, so he would do really well in both the defender role and the midfield role as well. The other thing is that uh, Ampadu falls in the top 10 in that season as well for in Serie A for the most tackles in the defensive third with a total of 44 tackles. Um, so that's very good considering that most of that season he played as a midfielder he shows that he's getting back he's making tackles he's getting rid of the ball um, and he's trying to get his team back up the pitch again in defensive situations we've seen so many times over the last couple of seasons that a player will in a midfield will leave their man and it'll be the the player that ends up scoring you could see somebody like Mark Rocker who's more of a technical midfielder his player just goes past him gets all the way to goal and scores and you think you watch the replay and he just runs past Rocker and Rocker's looking the other way and uh, not just to pick out Rocker but any of our midfielders that has happened to a lot you can see from this though that um, somebody like Ethan Ampadu is likely to track back follow his runners and make sure he gets that tackle and make sure he gets that clearance so that he doesn't um, uh, it isn't basically at fault and that's how it translates towards Leeds in that sense that somebody like Ethan Ampadu is the player that would check his shoulder, would scan, would make sure that every time his runner goes, he goes with him. Um, and then the next one is blocks and clearances, which again falls into the same thing. You'll see the graphic on the screen now. Um, he's very high up there with the likes of Koulibaly at the time, um, Skriniar and Tamori, who are all some of the best defenders in that league. Um, but yeah, Ampadu falls into elite categories surrounded by those players. Um, and for tackles and clearances, uh, blocks and clearances, sorry, that is actually a really good attribute to have because... Uh, like I say, Leeds have struggled in that aspect a lot over the last couple of seasons. Um, interceptions then, another one that would be really useful for somebody in that holding midfield role. Ampadu, um, total of 55 interceptions in Serie A, the highest being 117 for Milan Badelj and 115 for Mateos De Ligt's, um replacement at Juventus. That's Bremer, the Brazilian, sorry, it wasn't De Ligt that was um, doing that. It was Bremer who replaced him, uh, the Brazilian centre-back, who uh, is also very, very good. So he's not right at the top of the list, but he's decent compared to some of the players that you're looking at when you're actually looking in there. Um, Gary Medell, who is obviously was in the Premier League for a little bit, um, but he, yeah, he was a, a good midfielder at, at making those interceptions and stuff. Um, and yeah, Ethan Ampadu is up there with those again, so uh, likely to see that he, alongside maybe Tyler Adams, if he can stay in there, would be a sort of shield in front of the defence that can cut out a lot of the passes that are trying to get through to the, the forward men of the opposition. Um, now we come to his passing. Now, I mentioned this briefly yesterday um, when I was talking about how he will try and get the ball forward and he does a lot of progressive passes. Um, so... Ampadu attempted a total of 1,156 passes in Serie A that season and completed 80, uh, 866 of those, uh, resulting in 75% pass accuracy. Now, for a midfielder, 75% pass accuracy isn't fantastic, but it's because a lot of them are trying to get the ball forward and trying to progressively pass. So the progressive passing distance made by Ampadu... Um, just misses out on the average, which is uh, 6,838 yards over the, over the course of that season. Um, so he is trying to get the ball forward just about as average as um, other midfielders in there. So you're not expecting him to be every time he gets the ball pumping it forward, but you are expecting him to not be the sort of player who just passes it sideways and backwards every time. He will get his head up and look up and see if he can um, find a pass forward. And that compares quite well to the average sort of data set there with the fact that 
um, Ethan Ampadu likes to get the ball forward, but he's not also trying to do that every single time. Um, Ampadu does well, though, um, in regard to being pressed when he's uh, passing the ball. So any teams that are coming and pressing us, um, he completed 185 passes whilst being pressed by uh, the opponent in the Italian league that season, uh, the average being 163 for the midfields and defenders who played at least 1,500 minutes. So, yeah, Ampadu's above average then in that sense for people coming and pressuring him and him still getting the ball out. And that is, again, relating back to Leeds this time, something that we've struggled with. When we looked at Jesse Marsh's system, we knew that they were trying to get the ball forward as fast as possible. But when somebody came and pressed them, a lot of the time they would lose the ball, they would misplace the pass, etc., etc. Ethan Ampadu, though, is pretty calm under pressure for someone so young and he's able to make those passes even though he's under pressure. Um, and I think that's when an opponent is with, was within five feet of him um, and they're closing him down and he's making those passes. So to make 185 passes... Um, in pressure situations is a very, very good thing to have uh, in there for Ethan Ampadu. With possession then, Ampadu doesn't really like to carry the ball forward too much. Um, there are certain clips when you look at the compilations and stuff of him where you can see him trying to drag the ball forward, but that doesn't actually happen that much. A lot of the time he likes to do um, the passing side of things really and keep the ball moving rather than take the ball and dribble himself. It's not to say that he doesn't see an opportunity and go for it and drive into the midfield if he can. Um, but for the most part, he, he likes to make the ball do the running, basically. Um, obviously, a ball can travel faster than a person can, which is always what we were taught in amateur football. Um, you can make the ball travel faster than you can, so pass it. Uh, and I think that's kind of the philosophy, basically, that Ethan Ampadu takes, is that he's able to just pass the ball, keep it moving, keep things ticking over. And especially in a possession side, you kind of want somebody like Ethan Ampadu to keep the ball. Um, I mentioned this last season with somebody like Adam Forshaw, the fact that he's able to just quite casually and quite calmly keep the ball, keep things ticking over like a metronome going from side to side. And eventually when a space opens up, that's when somebody can try and break the lines with a pass. And Ethan Ampadu could be the person to do that as well. Like I say, he does try to progress the ball sometimes uh, with that passing range. But um, yeah, he doesn't like to carry the ball forward too much um, on his own. So yeah, that's the sort of player profile then on, on Ethan Ampadu. I think he'd be a very good player to have in the championship, a very good midfielder. Like I say, he's got quite a lot of experience considering he's so young. Um, and I do think he would do really, really well at Leeds United and especially as a midfielder. I don't think he'll be set up to be as a defender, but I think he can certainly drop in there when he's needed um, because I think we're probably going to go in for somebody like Nat Phillips to play on the right-hand side of that defence and then have Verber on the on the left-hand side with Ethan Ampadu and Holt hopefully Tyler Adams in that central midfield role. Now, if you've seen clips of the um, Leeds United, official Leeds United podcast with Parag Marate, he did a, um, a conversation with Matt Lewis um, where he was basically talking about the fact that it's finally gone through, what, what the sort of immediate term plans are. And he basically said, um, it's just a paraphrase in here, oh, it's also nice to be able to see people around uh, San Francisco wearing a Tyler Adams shirt. Now, to me, that indicates that he... Obviously, they want to keep him, but to me, that indicates that he may have had some sort of commit from commitment from Tyler Adams to stay, um, and I hope that is the case, really, because having Ethan Ampadu alongside Tyler Adams in that mid midfield would give us such a solid base to work from, and if you've got somebody like Nat Phillips and... Um, Verber in behind, it gives you license to have maybe a younger player like Drama at right back and maybe um, bring in another left back as well. So it, it, it that would make us very, very solid at the back. And I, I think Ethan Ampadu would be an excellent signing. For £7 million, it's not a great layout um, and it, he could come really good. The actual structure of the deal um, in terms of buy on, sell on, stuff like that. Chelsea don't have a buy back clause, so they, they can't they don't have a set number that they are allowed to buy him back for, uh, but they do have a sell-on clause. Now, I'm not sure how much that actually is, um, but usually they're likely to be in the region of 5-10%, um, maybe a little bit more. Um, I don't know how it's actually structured, but there is, certainly is uh, a sell-on clause. So if we were to then sell him for £50 million, um, if it's 10% sell-on clause, we'd have to give them £5 million. That's basically how it works. Um, 
but yeah, it's not a massive issue for Leeds really, unless he becomes an excellent player and then we sell him on, we're still going to make a lot of profit anyway. Um, but for the moment, I think he's a very good serviceable midfielder and I think he'll do well for Leeds in the championship. So thanks for watching this one. The next video is going to be about Glenn Kamara from Rangers and that is unless there is some sort of news that makes me do a video about something else in the meantime. Um, but yeah, expect the next one in the next day or two to be uh, Glenn Kamara from Rangers, who is another midfielder that we're going to be taking a bit of a, a bit of a deep dive on. So thanks for watching this one and I'll see you next time on Leeds Lately.